Hey guys, if you like the content, please be sure to like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here and we're doing another Swiss Born of the Gods draft. We've opened Champion of Stray Souls. He seems okay. Uh, he keeps coming back if you got enough mana. Not the most exciting mythic. Uh, Siren of the Silent Song is pretty good. I like this card. Evasion and the mill as well as the discard can be pretty punishing. I like it. definitely like it more than the Shrike Carpy. Uh, we may have to go with my old original, Fall of the Hammer. It keeps us the most open as well as being an awesome removal spell. Um, I could just start off with the Mythic, but to be honest, I, I don't think this guy's that great. Am I wrong? Is this guy really good? He's a 6-mana 4-4 four, four Mythic, which already is like, why? And then his abilities are like super expensive, too. Something about this guy bugs me. But who knows? Maybe he's actually good. I'm not sure. I don't think he's all that good. Okay, follow-up pick. Oh, Raised by Wolves is pretty good. Siren of the Fanged Coast is pretty good. Nyxborn Wolf is cool. Skirmisher. Reveler and Rise to the Challenge are a little less exciting. They're both playable, but I don't feel like they're quite the pick yet. I don't get a chance to play Raised by Wolves much. I think the card's probably better than Nyxborn Wolf. I guess it's more expensive, but... Green-red beats is typically pretty good. I mean, obviously, red-white is bomb as well. Skirmisher and Fall of the Hammer are very good together. Um, Raised by Wolves seems like it could be really good. I'm going to give Raised by Wolves a chance. I think I've played it once before, but I never got to resolve it. Getting two wolves... Getting a couple bears? I don't know. Something about Raised by Wolves seems really good. Triggers your heroic. As well as gives you two dudes. I don't know. It seems good to me. Okay. Can do Rolliker. Another heroic trigger. Foil Temple of Malice. I don't think that's worth anything, right? Might as well check. Foil Temple of Malice. Temple of Malice? Oh, it's buying for 2.5? No way. That's it. That can't be right, is it? Wow, sells pretty good. All right, well, I'm going to take the Foil Temple of Malice then. Otherwise, I would have taken the Nyxborn Rolliker, but this seems to actually... This could be worth like three or four tickets. And who knows? Maybe it opens this up for black? Uh, Rolliker, or even Drown in Sorrow, is fine. Drown in Sorrow is not great in Limited, much better in Constructed, but still definitely get some huge value on that. Okay. Uh, we can go Minotaurs. I haven't really focused on that before, and taking a Ragemonger here seems like a good way to jump into it. Uh, otherwise, we can take Rise to the Challenge or Kragma Butcher. I would say Ragemonger is better if I'm going to go Minotaurs, right? Uh, it might be worth a try. Then we're kind of getting out of the Raise by Wolves, but that might be alright. Butcher might be safer in case this doesn't work out, but if I take the Ragemonger, I can try and start going Minotaurs. I, I haven't done them, I haven't done a straight Minotaur list before. We can try it. Might be something fun. If it doesn't work out, whatever, we can hop out of it. Uh, so we can take Cyclops, Reveler, Oatsworn if I stay in green. Oatsworn is definitely good with the Fall of the Hammer and the Raise by Wolves. Uh, Grave Robber Spider if I were end up Jund for some reason. I mean, that's possible, but not likely. A couple good blue cards in here as well. Weight of the Underworld, not the most exciting. Could just take the Reveler, but it's not all that good. Kind of looking for some Minotaurs. 
I mean, this at least, I think I can snag a Reveler here. It's not actually that great, but the bonus, the perk of it is it destroys all of the rare artifacts from the format. So I actually kind of like that. All right, we can take the Cyclops here. Scourge is good in red-green because you can pick up Portent of Betrayals out of the next couple packs. And then he actually is good with Portent. Sealing their guy, sacrificing it, making it big. He also is technically anti-removal uh, and stuff like that. But we might actually be better off taking the Forlorn Sudama if we want to actually make a Minotaur thing work. And uh, this card's actually fine. It's got the evasion and then it untaps and gives you zombies. And they don't enter tapped too, so it's, it's not bad. I think we'll go with the Sudama. We're going to see if we can make red-black work. Maybe Jund, if, if green is su super open, we can start approaching that. All right, Cyclops of One-Eyed Pass. Some decent blue picks in here, but nothing crazy. All right, Rise to the Challenge or some black cards. I think we'll, we'll take the Rise. I like it more than the Necrobite, I'm pretty sure. I like the Regen, but I like the Combat Trick. Well, I guess they're both technically the same thing, aren't they? Maybe we do take the Necrobite then. This is more expensive, but Rise of the Challenge... Rise of the Challenge is, I guess, better if you're trying to get in damage on them, which we presumably are, but Necrobite's going to work better for removal spells. That's actually tough. I think because, I, I think I actually want the more damage of Rise of the Challenge for a deck like this, probably. It's tough to say right now. Here's a Minotaur, though. Alright, we'll take that in case we end up with the, oh, this guy's a Minotaur too, but... I guess I'd rather play the Brawler. Not that he's good, but he could be playable if we if we get the right stuff. All right, we can take the Ashiox Adept. We can also take another Reckless Reveler, but I think we'll go with Adept. It's an uncommon, and uh, you can get some good stuff on that. Scouring Sands or Grizzly Transformation. We could actually play the Transformation on, like, a Cyclops or something, so could be good. All right, we'll take the Minotaur here. I guess it technically does get one cheaper. Still not that good. Uh, whatever, we'll take the archetype. Sure. Okay. So, we are trying to make a red-black Minotaur thing work, though. We'll see if we can. Alright. Well, there's a Fire drink, uh, Drinker Seder. He's pretty aggressive. He's not a Minotaur. You can also take the Farikus Cure. Decent removal. If we're playing straight up red, black, I'd probably like to be aggressive. But do we want the Fire Drinker Seder straight up? Yeah, I mean, he's good. He's a rare. He's strong. He's not a Minotaur, but you can buff him. Uh, we appear to probably be able to make that work. Freikus Cure is solid removal, though. I think Cure is probably going to be better than the Seder in most instances. Okay. Uh, Scourge Mark. Read the Bones. Peak Eruption. Rage of Perforos. I think we can take Reed and be okay. We can also take Dragon Mantle. But I'm going to take the Read the Bones. Wave Crash Triton is very good. Hopefully we will peak or rage, and or both. All right, Borderland Mantar, but we got to take the Lightning Strike. Also, Baleful Eidolon in here. Um, certainly not unhappy about Lightning Strike. Okay, so now we can take Dragon Mantle or Seder Rambler. I think probably the Mantle is better. Nessie and Aspen here as well, and a Boon of Erebus, all good. But uh, I like the Cantrip uh, Auras. Dragon Mantle's a good one. Okay, so now we can do Cavern Lampad or Stone Shock Giant. I think Stone Shock Giant's going to be the pick. Some good green cards in here, definitely. But Stone Shock Giant is just, he's a good big threat. All right, now, uh, I mean, try and splash the Scholar again, but... Doesn't seem necessary. 
this time around. We can just take the Cutthroat Maneuver. I, I think this card's fine. We're going to need some more creatures, though, so i got to start focusing on that. Uh, Phalanx can't do anything with it. Prowler's Helm's okay. Unicorn Heart don't seem all that important. I think we'll take the Burnished Heart just in case I want to, if I have to, end up splashing a color for some reason. All right, we'll take the Spear Point Oread. Not a great card, but it bestows. All right, well, sadly, it doesn't look like Mantars is going to work out. I kind of dreaded this happening uh, when I go into... It's the problem with any sort of tribal strategy in Limited. You hope that it works out, and if it doesn't, you end up with some really mediocre Minotaurs. So, uh, at this point, maybe I will just take the Scholar and try and splash it and make it work. It's a good win con. The problem is, uh, when you try and go for like a good Minotaur strategy and it doesn't work out, you end up with a really like super lackluster aggro deck. I shouldn't have. I guess I just shouldn't have gone for Minotaurs. I think people enjoy to see the Minotaur strategy, but. I shouldn't have even gone for it. I should have just focused on something else, but that's all right. It's not a big deal. I'll try and uh, salvage what I can from this. Um, am I going to play the Scourge Mark? Not likely. It is a Cantrip Aura. I think I'd rather have the Peak Eruption for sideboard. This this card just destroys people. Okay, Wild Celebrants. Yeah, so far, pretty weak deck overall. Managed to pick up, I think, zero... Yeah, straight up zero Minotaurs out of that pack. Uh, looks like green and blue are open, so uh, going black-red has just not worked out well for us at all. Um, I guess I could show green, but at this point, I think it's just too late to, to switch back. Yeah, I was I was just really hoping to make a Minotaur deck work, but that that's just not going to happen, I don't think. So we might just be playing Ragemonger as a... Yeah, third to last pick Nessian Corsair. Maybe maybe we can switch into green or Jund at the end with the Burnished Heart. That might be something we, we straight up have to do. I'm not sure yet. I guess we don't even have that much good green. So it might not even be worth it. But yeah, red and black are, are definitely not open, sadly. All right. I've opened my fourth Perforos, so I guess that's a good reason to be in red. In the same pack as the Minotaur, too. But Perforos it is. All right, well, he helps the deck. Let's see if we can get a hammer pick two again. Then we know that Moto's broken. At this point, I think green's out, actually. Let's, let's just try and salvage uh, whatever we can out of this red-black. All right, Mo Moto's definitely broken. I'm, I'm, something's wrong with, uh, with Moto. I think they intentionally are. Uh, I mean, that's ridiculous, right? You guys saw the last video. If I, somehow I managed to call shot Hammer of Perforos directly after a Perforos pick again, someone. I mean, seriously, there's something wrong there. Something is seriously wrong with Moto. That is ridiculous. Also, Magma Jet in here and Rage would be nice. And Freik is here. This pack has everything we want in it. Um, Alright, we can take the Minotaur, but, I mean, Emissary is significantly better. And since Minotaur strategy is pretty crap anyway. I guess Mi Minotaur has the added bonus of giving us more devotion. But Perforos' Emissary is just straight up a better card. You know what I mean? Bestow. Uh, straight, I, I mean, synergistically, Minotaur is going to be better with Magemonger and Perforos, whereas Emissary is going to be better with the rest of the deck, and it still gets some devotion for that. Let's get rid of the Scholar. Ooh, well, somehow Red uh, opened up again at the end. Definitely take an Ember Swallower. This deck just got two to three times better, I would, I would say. All right, Cerberus for days. We've got the Perforos. Um, I guess none of these cards really matter. Could take the Rescue. All right, Cyclops is good. We'll take him. 
All right, this deck got a lot better, I admit. But uh, yeah, seriously, guys, I, I do think something's wrong with Moto. If I open a Perforos into Hammer, three different drafts, that happened. That's the third time I've gotten... I think one of the times I wasn't in red, so I only snagged the Perforos, but three different times Perforos into Hammer, and two of those times it was directly first pick ha per, uh, Hammer or Perforos into second pick Hammer. So I, I don't know. Does that seem strange to you guys too? That is a real. That is like a remarkable, remarkably odd coincidence. Um. None of these cards matter. Nylea's presence could help somebody. It's hurt somebody. Alright. Rage. Potentially playing that. Priest maybe can break some stuff. We don't care about anything else really. Uh, sure. Doesn't matter, I guess. Alright. Alright, well. Good news. That last pack really sort of made the deck. Alright, so let's put in the cards we definitely want to play. There's 24. Almost mono red again. I think we have way too many four drops, uh, but only 14 creatures, which is kind of low. I thought we had more than that. Maybe not. The brawler is just terrible in here. I think we only need him because we don't have any cheap creatures. Um. We have tons of three drops, too, which is a little bit of an issue. Yeah, I think we got to cut a four drop. But I really don't want to. Maybe we cut the Grizzly Transformation. I like it, but I don't really want to cut a creature. Oh, that's a creature. Perforos is kind of a creature. I mean, it's a creature card, but... I think we got to play 17 lands. With that many 4-drops that are all monstrosity, we got to be hitting our land drops pretty consistently. We also need double black to make the cure work. And we don't get punished from Mana Flood if we have the Hammer of Perforos. We've got Rage as well. Okay. Yeah, I think we're just going to cut the Grizzly Transformation. Um, yeah, so this deck's not great, but it's okay. Felhide Brawler looks pretty ugly, admittedly. Can't even block almost 100% of the time. Ragemonger's pretty much our only way to have it block. Emissary's almost like a 7-drop. This guy's like 8 if we want a Monstrosity M. We've got like all the expensive monstrosity so we're not I, I don't think we have a lot of mana sinks if we get flooded um, and we discovered there's definitely something wrong with moto why else would hammer ever be acceptable I think because I think I'm actually gonna play burnished heart I, I've just got too many too much four drop stuff. At least if I if I have a burnished heart and three mana, I can go up to five, so I can play everything. So let's get rid of this. Almost I almost want to get rid of the Felhide Brawler, but we might actually keep him just because I want fifteen creatures. So let's let's get rid of the Cutthroat Maneuver. Life Link is good, but I've just got way too many four drops. I need to lower the curve. I want the Cutthroat Maneuver, but then again, I want all of these creatures, too. I mean, I could cut the Sudama as well. But it's got Evasion, and it actually generates creatures. I feel like because it's good on an empty board, or on its own, 
or a stalled board. If you're in, if you're in a stalled board, it gets in because it's got intimidate and then makes zombies for you. I feel like it just pushes the pushes the pace. All right. Well, we're yeah, we're certainly more. Oh, we've got the Temple of Malice as well. That's cool. So they want to do twelve and four. I don't think so. Um, we can do eleven seven if you count the temple for both of them, which you should. And, uh, I mean, we only because I want the double black early, but I could actually see the argument of just going 12-6. Let's do 12-6. We get... We get rewarded for having a lot of mountains for Dragon Mantle. I just really don't want to be missing my double red. I'm a, I'm a little more okay with, with missing out on double black early for Farika's Cure. If, as long as we can hit our double red when we need it. Okay, this is an interesting deck. Um, went for Minotaurs early, that didn't pan out. Ended up going Perforos into Hammer for the third time. And uh, getting a mid mid to late, like, just basically making our entire deck in pack three, which is kind of cool, so I'm glad that worked out. Okay, a uh, little bit removal light, because black was getting cut, uh, but yeah, that's cool, that's all right, this, this deck's certainly got enough means to win. All right, I'll see you around one.